Hello. Can you hear me? Everybody? Okay. Um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, after watching that video, I'm almost ashamed to tell my story. Um, it was a much simpler story, uh, although it was the biggest crisis that ever happened in my life. It, it uh, pales in comparison to uh, what, what the family that you just saw goes through and many people who I met just in the last hour have gone through. Um, those of you who have read Eat, Pray, Love know that it has a very romantic ending. I meet this lovely Brazilian guy who's now being played by Javier Bardem. <laughs> Um, who looks about as much like my husband as I look like Julia Roberts, I just want to say. Um, but that's not what we're here to discuss. Although I'd be happy to talk to you about it later. Um, anyway, my, uh, my husband, who's in the books, goes by the name Felipe, but is, is really named uh, Jose. Uh, he and I were coming into the country together. We were sort of beginning to build a life in the United States. And like all binational couples, doing an enormous amount of, of expensive and complicated commuting to, to work around visa restrictions and, and figure out how to do that. Uh, we came in through the Dallas-Fort Worth airport, and I went through customs first and waited for him on the other side, which was something that we'd gotten used to over the years that we'd been together. And immediately knew uh, that something was wrong um, when he went through the, uh, the foreign citizens line. Normally these things, there's like this librarian-like thunk of the welcoming visa entry stamp that, that people who are in binational relationships live and die by, and it didn't come. Uh, the guy just uh, sat there looking and paging through this again and again, and, and I remember my husband, who's a world traveler, telling me, on any given day, any given border guard in any given part of the world can define your life for you. Um, and we learned that that day. Uh, this, this guy just decided that he didn't want to let him in. And I want to just say that he hadn't broken any laws and he hadn't even overextended his visa time. It's just that, um, as the gentleman explained to us later, he felt that my, my now husband had been coming to the country too much. Um, that's it. Uh, just a, a random arbitrary decision. And, and he was taken away from me and, and put in custody for six hours and I was unable to find out what was going on. And in the end days of the Bush administration, this was not a comfortable position to be in, to have your foreign born sweetheart taken away by guys in Homeland Security uniforms. Um, and I waited for six hours and finally came in after he'd been interrogated and was told that he would not be allowed into the country again. And obviously this was a huge blow and, and we, were, we were frightened and terrified, but then we were offered this wonderful piece of news by Officer Tom of the Department of Homeland Security, who very nicely informed us that, that there was a loophole um, and that we, you know, could, I could, because I was an American citizen, bring my partner in and that he could jump the line um, was the, the phrase that, that we were given and he could be allowed to apply for permanent citizenship. And um, what I remember most about that, what I remember most about that moment uh, was the, the phrasing that Officer Tom used. He said, we, the United States government, you know, he was at that moment the face of the United States government. He said, we, the United States government, Elizabeth, offer this to you as a courtesy for your citizenship. And he was a nice guy, and he was certainly a courteous guy. He had impeccable manners, and he couldn't have been kinder to us in a very horrible situation. But there was something about that phrasing that gnawed at me in the moment that it came out of his mouth and has continuously bothered me since. And it was the use of the word courtesy. Um, my citizenship is not a courtesy um, that is offered to me by my government. It is my birthright. It is my right as an American citizen. And my rights are not something that are offered to me out of politeness or friendliness by the United States government. Um, any more than, you know, they don't do this to me because they like me, you know? Um, and, and, you know, my rights are a hard fought for and hard defended series and, 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 you know, maze of entitlements and obligations um, that are part of the contract that I share with my government. And it too has its side of the contract of obligations and responsibilities and entitlements. And we negotiate our relationship together based on those and those have been fought for and defended and challenged in the courts and um, in this country for as long as we've been a country and before. Um, and, and central to those rights are the idea that I will obey the law and pay taxes and be a good citizen and the government will do its part, which is to first and foremost ensure the safety and the well-being and the privacy of my family, um, however I should choose to create that family. The fact that I'm entitled to this um, and that in five minutes of a conversation with this Homeland Security Department guy, he was able to toss me this 
what my friends call the hetero card. <laughs> you know, he was able to toss me the hetero card and I was able to play that card when people who are sitting in this audience have been together for 30 years and are unable to play that is, is um, unconscionable, quite simply. Um, it's, it makes these civil rights seem like a country club with very limited exclusive membership. And uh, there are certain people in the neighborhood who are allowed to be part of that country club and there are certain people who are not. And that's just not tenable. Um, and the story ends that after what I've now learned from having seen other people's immigration stories was a relatively easy year, you know, um, in exile, both of us fighting very hard for the right to come back. Uh, we came back, he's, he's now on the, the track to citizenship. And what I wanna express is the ending of the story, which is not, you know, our union or, or even the sort of paperwork that we went through. The ending of the story is that we now live in New Jersey, um, which is where you would live uh, if you had choice to live anywhere in the world. Um, uh, <laughs> certainly would live there over Brazil uh, or <laughs> Australia or other options. Um, we live in New Jersey. We live in a small community. We are homeowners. Um, my husband has started a very successful business in the town where we live. He employs out-of-work Americans. We pay an enormous amount of taxes because we live in New Jersey. Um, we are involved in the business of the town. We are contributors to everything that happens in the town. We march in the Memorial Day Parade. We are part of the fabric of this society. And I hate to say it because it kind of messes with my street cred as an alleged bohemian, but we're sort of pillars of society. That's, um, <laughs> accidentally, we have ended up being that. And, and all of that energy and all of that money and all of that goodwill that we put into this town and all of that work and all those jobs and all of that, we would have taken out of this country had they not let him in. And that's what's happening right now, is that there's this drain. This, so in addition to being unjust and cruel and unconscionable, these laws are stupid because they are taking away some of the best and brightest minds and, and uh, prospects out of the country and, and making those people be forced rather than putting their shoulder to the wheel and working for the betterment of the society, they are forced to do nothing but fight for their lives. And they are in a fight for their lives and I am proud to be part of that fight. I'm humbled and honored to be part of that fight. I'm happy not only to be here tonight but to also say that I am a donor to this organization and now I am also a lobbyist. Um, and I hope that you will all join me in that. It's worthy and um, until there's fairness on this for everybody, then, then there isn't for anyone. So thank you. <laughs>